Bismillah rahman rahim So in this uh, video, we will be learning about the triaxial test simulation in the Ploxys 2D software. So let's uh, start uh, the Ploxys 2D. Uh, in this video, we'll be learning about the use of uh, hardening soil model. So firstly, I will be selecting new project, then try exit. <laughs> Test. Now uh, I will be selecting plane strain model. Why? Uh, because you can see here I am taking half of the sample, so that's why I can I can do it using the uh, axisymmetric model. So here you can see. Now uh, I will be selecting axisymmetric model, 15 nodded element and dimensions. I will be selecting one by one. Dimension. So we will be taking five. Okay. Now I will be drawing the geometry like this. Yes, the the model is drawn. Now I will be applying some special boundary conditions to this model. I'll have to apply. Like I will go to loads and provide vertical fixities at the bottom. The purpose of these fixities has already been explained in the in the previous videos. Now I will be uh, selecting horizontal fixities for here. Uh, horizontal fixities means the roller support. It allows the translation in. Uh, vertical direction only so uh, in the next step i'll have to apply the load like here i'll have to apply the load because uh, uh, in this direction uh, firstly there is confining pressure to the soil sample so that's why i i am considering the exit or exismetric case that is why i have to apply the load in these two directions only because it's the half portion we are not considering the uh, other half portion due to the exist metric so yes now i will be applying the load this confining pressure now uh, i will have to define the material properties so here you can see the material properties uh, e50 to megapascal and cohesion is 5 kPa, 35 degrees is the angle of internal friction, the latency angle is 5 degrees and confining pressure is 100 kPa and the axial compression will be applied up to 450 kPa. So uh, let's go to the software. Now I will be defining the material properties, new, no. Here is some detail, I will write soil. Now I will not be using the Mohorkula model, why? Let's first uh, first understand why we are not using the Mohorkula model because of its certain limitations. We will be using hardening soil model. So what is hardening soil model? It is basically an advanced model. For Mohorkula model, uh, the limiting states are cohesion, phi and uh, the latency angle. But hardening soil model deals with three input stiffnesses E50, E odometer and E U R unloading reloading stiffness. So in contrast to Mohukula model, hardening soil model considers the increase of stiffness with the increase in pressure. So it's understood uh, while simulating the triaxial test, stiffness uh, increases with the increase in uh, depth because sample has to be extracted from certain depth. So that stiffness should always be considered. Mohukula model does not consider this because look if the soil sample is extracted from 10 meter depth so it means at 10 meter depth uh, to simulate the uh, stresses on the sample we must consider the stiffness increase so in the next uh, hardening soil model does not consider the softening and deboning effect now what are the limitations of a uh, hardening soil model it's an isotropic model. It cannot be used for cyclic or strict loading 
nor cyclic mobility or anisotropic behavior so we cannot use hardening soil model for anisotropic behavior i hope you understand the anisotropic behavior uh, the other limitation is it it takes longer duration due to the formation of stiffness matrices in each step uh, what are the limitation of mohor coulomb model why we are not using this model in this uh, uh, case it does not consider increase in stiffness with depth as i earlier told it does not show dependency on stress path uh, especially for undrained behavior so that is why we are not using the mohor coulomb model now uh, some basic definitions of e50 e odometer and eur uh, this document i'll be giving in uh, in the description you can download this uh, document for your for your further uh, understanding i'll be explaining a little bit uh, so just uh, try to make it the software video software tutorial video video now you can see here this is if we consider the total strength uh the at the failure and we take the stress to strain ratio of this part of the curve up till there then it is e naught stiffness young's modulus if we take half of uh, the strength of uh, material and then e50 is basically uh it is basically the slope at 50% strength uh it is stiffness at uh, 50% so if this is the 50% value of this curve then draw a straight line and find out the slope of this line so this is how we find out the e50 now e odometer there are some correlations from which the e odometer can be found uh, in fluxes it automatically uh, takes the uh, equal to the uh, the um, uh, e50 and uh, e e u r is taken as uh, three times of uh, e50 and e odometer but it varies with the type of soil remember if the soil is normally consolidated clay then e odometer reference and there are correlations uh, given over here uh, i will be explaining a little bit about this Th this is the procedure for the simulation you can read it on by own how you can verify your laboratory test uh, with the with the um, uh, simulation so you can do this uh, we will be doing this in soil test video where we will be discussing the there is a feature in the fluxes that is called as soil test we will be discussing this in that video the next probably so uh, here are some uh, correlations or of eur and further explanation of these uh, stiffness parameters you can use these correlations as well for e odometer reference is uh, reference pressure basically ref stands for reference pressure uh, and the reference pressure is taken as 100 kpa confining stress basically so correlation from spt and cpt for clays are generally not very reliable so you can use these as well uh, now we are uh, solving this problem so i hope you understood the whole scenario this is hardening soil model i'll not be changing it uh, okay remember weight is not considered in this case so you will have to remain it as it is you can see here weight is not here this is your assignment to practice so okay now uh weight parameter here the e50 is 20 000 kilonewton per meter scale or 2 megapascal this will be automatically equals to e50 is equals to e odometer but we can change manually as well and it is three times eur is three times of this so it's a uh, it's a normal case so cohesion is five 35 is the angle you can uh, check from the notes and the latency angle is basically angle of internal friction uh 30 minus uh, uh angle of internal friction minus 30 so when angle of internal friction increases uh, 30 by uh, from 30 then uh, angle of dilatancy is considered uh, normally so we will be discussing this uh, this soil test feature in the in the next video hopefully for odometer test and uh, triangle test as well so now i will be clicking okay now i will assign the properties to this model okay now i will have to provide the mesh a very coarse mesh can be used for this case very coarse mesh generate now uh, now i'll be quick uh, 
uh, uh, because uh, the most of the things I have already been explained in the previous videos. So, okay. Now I will uh, apply the phatic surface over here just to make sure the 100% saturation. That is why I am applying the water level over here. Now, now I will have to apply the closed flow boundary because this condition is applied when we don't want to, uh, we, when we don't want water to flow out of this. So, that is why I'm applying this boundary over here. Closed flow boundary. Now, generate pressure. Okay. Now, we'll switch to the initial uh, conditions. I uh, will click over here. And now, the weight will be zero. The initial stresses are not considered in this case. Okay. Okay. No problem. Now, update and go to the calculations. Yes, uh, try axial safe. Now, uh, calculation phase for the first phase, go to the parameters, uh, define. Now, uh, in the first phase, we will be applying the confining pressure after the for the saturation purpose. So, this is uh, minus 100 is given in the document minus 100, uh, minus uh, sign shows the compression. Okay, now minus 100 over here as well. Minus 100. Now we will have to activate this board. The first calculation phase is okay. Now, uh, in the next uh, phase, go to the parameter. Now we don't want the effect of previous uh, settlement. So reset displacement to zero. Define. Now you can see in the document we have to apply the exact compression of 450 kPa. So it will be minus uh, 450 in this case. Uh, minus 450. Uh, basically, it's it, this uh, value is too much. The soil will fail before reaching uh, 450 kPa stress. But okay, now you can see this is uh, 450 kPa stress is applied. This is 100. That's why it is shrink. Now update. Uh, uh, there is another uh, step phase uh, which will be starting from phase one. Go to the parameter, reset displacement to zero, define. Now we'll have to deactivate this, so this loading. Now it will be starting from the first phase and we'll try to calculate the, the stress that is causing the soil to fail. Uh, so update. Now we'll have to define the points for curve. Remember, this is uh, selected as nodes for low displacement curves. This is uh, select stress points per curve. If I select this, now I will have to define these points over here in B. You can check this, uh, deselect all nodes or stress points and so on. So I will have to update this. Now the calculation is started because I want the stress strain curve. This uh, will probably, uh, the soil will collapse before 450 kPa. So that is why phase two and four, phase three uh, may not be completed and it will show error. Uh, actually, this is not error. It, it just shows that the applied stress is more than the strength of the soil. So we'll check the strength of the soil uh, uh, in the third phase that how much uh, load it takes to fail basically this this is not error basically uh, look this is uh, written as prescribed ultis, uh, ultimate state not reached means uh, the we applied 450 kPa uh, low uh, stress so soil is failed before 450 kPa that is why the sign is shown at as, as it is so uh, there is no uh, need to worry about this output we will go to the output so this is the deformed uh, mesh no the more important is to uh, calculate the curve program. Okay, new chart, and we'll select the triaxial part. And here uh, you can see the stress strain points. If you select points for low displacement curve, then these points will not be able to be selected. So that is why we want strain on the x-axis, point E. I want this on point P. Uh, here the displacement or strain uh, along the y direction. Uh, you must select this and then uh, I will be selecting stress uh, along the uh, y-axis point P 
again this will be selected as uh, in y direction i'll be uh, selecting inward side you can format this as well and you will see the curve now you can see uh, let's first end this phase one and two okay okay now you can see here this is the stress strain curve uh it is it takes almost 390 or uh, 3 392 uh kps stress uh divitoric stress basically so we applied 450 if we apply 390 kps stress then it will be performed uh, exactly uh and it will uh, it will show it will not show the message in the uh, log info so uh you can see the stress strain uh, curve uh, you can take these points uh and copy these to plot in the excel uh, but in the excel make sure you have to you have to check the loading and unloading steps like here it is uh, loading values from uh, 100 onwards but these are the unloading so uh, this is how we can perform or simulate the triagial test uh, uh, using the proxy i hope you like the video uh, if you like the video subscribe uh, and be updated about our uh, coming videos thank you and uh, allah